Welcome to Beyond the Coverage. I'm Chris Horner, and this is 2021 Tour de France. We're only one week away. I want to break down a couple of the big teams before the Tour de France gets underway here in another week. Ineos Grenadiers announced their full lineup of eight riders, and the most surprising news, Rowan Dennis did not make it. Now, this is big news, really, on a team like this, because along with Rowan Dennis not being here, they have four leaders. Four leaders is a lot of guys to look after, and more importantly, that means you have one less super domestique or domestique rider to be able to ride through this first week before we get into the mountain stages. Without Rowan Dennis there, you're losing a, a guy who can ride the flats, and you know he can ride the climbs too, so he'll get over to all of the climbs, including the penultimate climb at the Tour de France, to start the last climb for the race leaders. But without Rowan Dennis there, they got to bring in another mix. So they're going to lose a strong flat guy who can climb. Let's call him Jonathan Castroviejo is the rider they're going to replace him with. We don't know exactly who the eighth rider was, but I'll say it's Jonathan Castroviejo. Now you got a guy who can still climb, but you don't have a guy who can protect the leaders on the flats, windy crosswind stages. These first four stages before stage five time trial begins are going to be crazy and insane. And Ineos have four leaders. Now, when I've done the Tour de France in my time, I've arrived 2007. I have the jersey here with Lotto. We had two leaders, Robin McEwen, a pure sprinter, Cadell Evans, a GC rider. So they never had a problem fighting for superiority on the team. It was really clear who was going to stay with Cadell and who was going to stay with Robbie McEwen. We had guys with Cadell. I always stayed with Cadell. I was the pure climber on the team. I was his last main guy to start the final climb. With Robbie McEwen, he had Freddie Rodriguez that was always there to help him out in the lead out right at the crucial moment between three all the way up to the final 250 meters to go. It would be Freddie Rodriguez there looking after him if he needed it. The other guys on the team were hybrids. They changed and they rode wherever they needed to be. If Freddie needed, if, I'm sorry, if Cadell Evans needed him, they rode with Cadell. If Robbie McEwen needed him, they would ride for Robbie on those stages. If they were good enough to get over the mountain stages and be there to help me before the last climb started, it was perfect. They would do my job. If they weren't there, I would have to do the job and go back and get the bottles for Cadell and then keep Cadell out of the wind. But it was clear cut going in. There was no drama with Lotta when I went in. Now with Radio Shack when I went in, we had Lance Armstrong, Levi Leipheimer, Andreas Cloden. Clody wasn't a problem. The problem we had, we were doing the cobblestone days and Levi Leipheimer rode straight by Lance Armstrong when he flatted and the drama was huge in the bus for the days to come. The arguing, the tension between the riders was always intense. Now, let's flip over to 2021, Team Enos. Not two leaders, but four leaders. The most complicated thing about four leaders, two of them have to know they might be leaders of the team, but they're not going to be the leader. In my book, I look at it that you have G. Thomas, Richard Carapaz are going to be the flat out two most favorite protected riders. When you're at home and you're watching these first four stages before the time trial begins, on stage five, what you want to look out for whenever someone has a flat, if there's a crash, how many of the Enos guys stop and wait for that favorite rider? That's going to tell you how important they are. They're telling us they have four leaders and they're even on par. It's never the case. That is not true. You cannot believe what they're saying. They clearly have one, two solid leaders. And then I would imagine Richie Port would be close to third. And of course, Tail Gagenhart. I would imagine they have him as a half leader back there. There's no way he's going to be on par with the three in front. But to us, they're telling all four. And to the riders, they could be telling all four too. Richard Carapaz right now, I would imagine, would be a, a 1B, not a 1A rider on the team. But we'll know by who gets in trouble because the odds of all four of them getting out of the first four stages with crosswinds, hilly climbs, lefts and right turns without having a mechanical or crash is really rare. So whenever, which one, whichever rider of the four has starts having problems, that's when we know their important role on the team. If we see more of the team coming back, if there's seven guys coming back when G. Thomas has a flat or mechanical or before the penultimate climb on stage one and two, because those are hard finishes where you can lose a lot of time, we're going to find out who comes back. 
I would assume Richard Carapaz, under my experience, I would say he's going to be a 1B rider, G. Thomas, a 1A rider, all the way through until stage five. Now, this is when things get really tricky for G. Thomas because if you look at the 2019 Tour de France, Ineos won 2019 with Egon Bernal. When they went into the time trial, though, G. Thomas was still their number one. He was 1A leader on that team, no doubt about it. When he lost the time trial to Julian Alaphilippe, that's when all of a sudden those riders, Egon Bernal and Thomas, became even on their leadership role within the Ineos team. Now you can see clearly Thomas wasn't climbing as well as, say, Pino, Alaphilippe, and a bunch of the other GC favorites, actually, and clearly not climbing better than Egon Bernal. So now all of a sudden those two became even. At this year's Tour de France, with four leaders on Ineos, stage five, if Thomas wants to win this Tour de France, not only does he have to produce a better time than all three of the other leaders that he's competing against on Ineos, but he has to beat the two Slovenians. If he doesn't beat the two Slovenians, it'll be just like the season we watched in 2019 with Alaphilippe beat him in that time trial, and now... G. Thomas was no longer 1A leader on the Enos team. So, stage five for Thomas, massively important for the team and for Thomas. If Thomas wants to win the tour, he has to be the first on general classification amongst the favorites. Doesn't have to beat a Walt Van Art that could possibly be race leader after stage five, but he has to be above the two Slovenians or very, very close in order to still be 1A captain of Ineos. If he loses to the Slovenians by significant time, now all of a sudden Richard Carapaz's importance of the role becomes much closer to, to Thomas's importance of the role and they'll be more even. And Richie Port, in my opinion, his role will be up there where all three guys will be really solid. Teo Gagenhart, I think, will always be a distant fourth GC favorite on that team unless he can do something spectacular in the mountains. But until we get into the first end of the first week of race and before the rest day, those two mountain stages, Teo Gagenhart will always be distant compared to the first three. Now, this is where it gets tricky with Enos because they have to keep all four in the right frame of mind, focused, motivated, and not feeling neglected and left behind. Because you see it many times where riders, especially when there's just two and the team gets split, if one gets in trouble and nobody waits for them, that's going to change their mentality of how they feel, the love for that team. And of course, Enos will have to deal with that drama. No director, especially Enos, is not going to run into any... For sure, there's going to be drama for the directors of Enos trying to keep all four guys calm when a chaotic crash or a bunch split or a crosswind section hits at this year's tour. It's going to happen. It always does. And the odds that they can get out of it danger-free without any problems is really rare. And here's the other thing to remember. Years past when they go in with Chris Froome as their number one leader, that means they got five, six guys on these crosswind stages to keep Enos at the front the whole time and out of all those echelon splits and crashes. Now when you come with four leaders and you, one of them's not Rowan Dennis of the next Domestique guys. So the next four workers, you got Michael Kwiatkowski, he's great. Luke Rowe, fabulous rider. Jonathan Castor Viejo, of course, great in the mountains, but won't be so great on the flats. So that takes away another guy from the flats to ride. And then you're left with one other rider there, Dylan Van Barley, to work. Basically, they have two big guys to work on the flat stages. When in years past, and they're only working for Chris Froome, they have three or four to keep that pace really high. Now they really have only two guys to keep that pace high, which means that they'll probably be getting swarmed on these stages, much like we saw last year when Jumbo Visma would just take over from Enos. Enos would be doing a great job from 10, 15K out, and then whenever it got dangerous in a really critical moment, you would see Jumbo Visma just swarm around the Enos train and they would get disappeared and lost in the back of the group. When in years past, they were always the ones at the front. Now expect to see them get lost at those crucial points. They'll have a solid team for keeping them out of danger until that last 10% of the race. And that's when you're going to see having four leaders is not so beneficial 
because they won't work for each other at that crucial moment, which means they're going to be in that dangerous section back there where crashes happen and splits in the field happen. Ineos have a big drama because they have Richie Port who can time trial but can't descend, G. Thomas who can time trial but maybe not climb with the best, Richard Carapaz who can climb with the best most likely at this Tour de France but can't time trial with the best versus the two Slovenians who can do all of that. Now the upside with Ineos, they have fabulous tactics. They really do a great job at most of the races that I've watched them all season long, if not throughout the decade of what I've watched them do. Their tactics are usually on point all the time. And of course, they got great climbers. When we've looked and we've read the Velo News article, and I'll post that below, you see where their director's talking about maybe bringing back the sky train and drilling it up the last climb because they have so many quality climbers. The problem is the SkyTrain won't work in 2021. It worked when you had Chris Froome because he was the best climber in the world and they had the best super domestiques. Michael Kwiatkowski was amazing. He's still a super domestique, but he doesn't have the climbing legs that he's had in the past. And so he's not going to be able to make that selection to bring it down to just two Slovenians, and of course, three or four Enos captains. It's not gonna happen. So when you read the Velo News article, if you see them doing a sky train, it's gonna be a nightmare. If they don't have the ability to do the sky train up the climbs unless they're going to make a prediction on who is leader number one and who is leader number two. Once they decide that they have one or two leaders, the sky train is absolutely doable. But when you have four leaders on the team, you can't have the Sky Train because you're going to need at least two of those leaders, Teo Gagenhart and Richie Port, to do the explosive acceleration at the beginning of the climb. Michael Kwiatkowski can't do that explosive cel acceleration. Jonathan Castroviejo can't do it. Luke Rowe certainly won't be there at the start of the climb. Dylan Van Barley probably won't be there at the start of the last climb, which means one of the four leaders, if not two or three of them, have to be there if and drilling it on the front if you want to see the old sky train. That I don't see happening. If they do it, it's gonna cause big problems and just leave Enos and with less guys and in a more predicament spot because now they rode all their guys, they blew up, and Yumbo Visma will have fresher guys, possibly Tade Pogacar with his UAE team Emirates. Mark Hershey might still be there if his form has come up from the Tour of Swiss. So look for that. I don't believe we're going to see a sky train unless they have the yellow jersey after stage five with G. Thomas or Richie Port. Otherwise, we're going to see a lot of drama from Enos at some point in time trying to do something different in this race. But I don't see it as being successful if they can't win the time trial with Garrett and Thomas. Hope you guys like the take on Beyond the Coverage. Look forward to some more. I'd like to cover in the, in the future here before the tour starts, Yumbo Visma, UAE Team Emirates, and of course the Kunic Quick Step with Julian Alaphilippe, who in my book could have possibly have won the Tour of Swiss. So look for that and I'll see you guys real soon on Beyond the Coverage.